Okay, and last but not least, we have Nathaniel Counts, who is the Senior Director of Policy at Mental Health America. His work involves innovative federal and state policy solutions for problems in behavioral health. He focuses on issues in alignment and sustainable financing and behavioral health care, as well as issues in population health. Thanks. Um, and how do I change this guy right here? Hi, everyone. Um, so, is this one work? Can, okay, if everyone can hear me. Uh, so I was tasked to kind of wrap this up and bring it home for policy, and I think I got extremely lucky. I think this will cover sort of everyone, even though uh, we only had one planning call. Um, so I'm very excited. Um, and so you can see our sort of motto at uh, Mental Health America is before stage four. Um, so for example, you know, like naloxone purchasing to stop overdose deaths are important, but there is a million points along that pathway that we could have intervened, and we should definitely take quite a lot of them. Um, so throughout this, throughout actually all the presentations, and this is where I really got lucky, everyone sort of noted the different way that like a, an event at time point A affects time point B, and how there's all these different points of intervention, and you even asked a question on this. Um, so there's an entire field called developmental cascades, where you can not only have this sort of like lay model, like difficult child factors, and uh, this sort of uh, socio-cultural context leads to early parenting problems, leads to you know, all these sort of things we can interpret, you'll see next to it are little numbers, and that is the effect size that each thing has on the next thing. So we can actually tell how important every step is along the way. Um, the other interesting thing is you can do this by gender. So how does gender affect this? And how does race affect this? And how does your community affect this? Um, and the answer is it's different every single time. Like, some factor might matter more for men than others, and some factor might matter more for women. Um, and you can and should take this into account when designing interventions, especially uh, when deciding what to finance through policy. Um, and so that was just the one for birth to substance use in adolescence. Um, I could have printed out or put up more of them, but they started to look like those little pictures where you like hold it close to your face and try to bring it away slowly. Um, so I just did it with one. But what do they look like? They look pretty similar. Um, a series of events that are sort of similar to the ones you just saw lead to depression, lead to suicide, then interestingly enough, they all, as been pointed out earlier, lead to one another if you keep going across the life course. So if you start using substances in adolescent, um, men in particular are actually way more likely to get depressed in older age. Um, and very likely it's like somewhat bi-directional, like they're affecting one another directly, but there's probably also underlying factors um, relating all of them to each other. Okay, so what does all this mean for policy, right? Because that's totally the important part, uh, since you guys all are here on the Hill. Um, so all the clinical stuff, for example, is exciting, but you don't need to mandate, right, that boys recognize their emotions better. Um, what we need is to make sure that we're financing interventions that are effective, that you pay people who help boys recognize their emotions to show up and do so. Um, and so I was gonna go through, I think, five good policy areas that we can improve upon to make sure we're doing gender responsive and effective intervention. Um, so the first one is McV, which you might recognize from the battle to try to reauthorize it, along with CHIP and community health centers. Um, that's the home visiting programs. Uh, so if you know, like, nurse family heart partnership, all these things that help <coughs> new low-income moms um, raise newborn babies. And so if you'll remember, a lot of this cascade starts at, like, very, I mean, even, like, preconception, but through conception into birth. Um, and so home visiting gives you a chance to begin to disrupt some of the cascade um, and intervene to support parents uh, as they go along. But, I mean, so make, funding McVee in and of itself is important, but we have tested McVee so much, like there's mountains of evidence supporting it. At some point, it just needs to become part of healthcare, right? Like we don't need to grant fund it, it could just be paid for by Medicaid. And the same McVee funds could then be used to push us on to the next frontiers of home visiting. Because um, home visiting was tested in the early 90s, and I think we're ready for whatever the next thing is. Um, and I think the extent funding is liberated to help community-based organizations figure out how we can do even better jobs. That would be a huge um, <coughs> help to boys and men. Um, so we have Every Student Succeeds Act. So um, let's say we have the hospitalized adolescent uh, who had suicidal ideation. Where do they go next? They go back to school. Um, and we have an entire mountain of new especially through Every Student Succeeds Act, ways that schools can kind of intervene to help kids um, from 
all sorts of stuff with professional development, new use of funds for how we train teachers, and opportunities in measuring sort of uh, school progress and ways to partner with the community. Um, schools unquestionably need help. Uh, and so in healthcare, for example, we use these things called quality improvement organizations where you have sort of central conveners helping clinicians meet their quality improvement objectives. We have no such thing in education. I mean, there's some like centralized TA centers, but nothing that's really helping them figure out what works in mental health and substance use. It's more like everyone reinventing the wheel over and over again all over the country. Um, and so the, you might recognize this from uh, Chip as part of what just was reauthorized, thank God. And um, CMMI creates opportunities for new payment models in healthcare. So if you want clinicians to practice in any way different than they were currently practicing, CMMI creates a pathway, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, um, to liberate them to do so and try realigning incentives to get them to do things like intervene way earlier than they have been. Um, and CHIPRA is the re last reauthorization of CHIP that created the uh, quality measurement standards for pediatrics, um, or at least the innovation pilots. Like, there's no standardized measure set, but there is uh, new measures being developed that are helpful. Um, so the biggest two barriers in the way we pay for healthcare uh, services for children in this area is we only pay for services when a condition's identified. So even though we know with like some degree of predictive certainty that these factors are likely to cause later substance use, depression, suicide. We cannot do anything until we have a code like they are now diagnosable with depression or they have suicidal ideation, um, unless we fudge it through adjustment disorder or something. Um, but we don't want to like force doctors to fudge their things. We want to make sure we're supporting good practice. Um, and the last thing I think is making sure that we sort of weight and value the earlier intervention. I mean, every intervention at every point in the life course isn't the same amount effective, and if to the extent there's like a really critical period of time to intervene, I think we would want to make sure that value-based <coughs> payment um, really does reinforce that kind of intervention. And so I just, I just kind of blew through those, but because you've had a long day of uh, different science, but the point is um, there's good evidence to show like depending on how you intervene at different points in the pathway, um, it has different amounts of effectiveness, and all of you in this room have sort of different parts of the levers of power that would cause that kind of intervention. Um, so thank you so much.